Hello friends, the topic for today is PIC 18 interrupts. The interrupt is one of the process of communication or data transfer between the microcontroller unit and the peripheral or devices. In microcontroller system, these peripherals are divided into two groups. First, devices that are external to the MCU and second, internal or on-chip devices such as timers, A2D converter, etc. PIC 18 microcontroller family of devices has multiple sources that can send interrupt request and a number of sources varies among different family members. In today's video, we will discuss the specific maskable interrupt scheme in PIC 18 microcontroller family in which interrupts are divided into two main groups, high priority and low priority. Special function registers, SFRs, that are associated with interrupts process are listed. We will also give overview of interrupt process in PIC 18 microcontroller family. Let us start. Welcome to our channel Engineering and Technology for You. The topic for today is PIC 18 interrupts. Introduction PIC 18 microcontroller family of devices has multiple sources that can send interrupt requests and number of sources varies among different family members. So, uh, if you take any this family, it is a vast family with so many members. So, specifically uh, this video applies to PIC 18F4550 and other members of the family. The PIC 18 family microcontrollers does not have a non-maskable interrupt or software interrupts. All interrupts are maskable. The priority scheme is divided into two groups, a high priority and low priority. And multiple special function registers, SFRs, you are used to implement the interrupt process. The high priority interrupt vector is at 00008H and the low priority interrupt vector is at 00018H. High priority interrupt events will interrupt any low priority interrupts that may be in progress. That is what is uh, the thing in PIC 18. Then let us go to the interrupt sources. In PIC 18 microcontroller, the interrupt sources are divided into two groups, external sources and internal peripheral sources on the MCU chip, that is the microcontroller chip. Let us first see the external sources. Port B pins are used as interrupt pins as follows. So, here RB0, RB1 and RB2, these three pins, there are also INT0, INT1 and INT2. These three pins of port B are multiplexed and external sources such as keyboard or switches can be connected to these pins as interrupting sources. So, we can directly connect the external sources such as keyboard or switches to these pins. These pins can set up and recognize either rising or falling edge triggered pulses. So, when we give rising or falling edge triggered pulses, they will be recognized. Then RB4 to RB7, the higher order pins of port B. Change in logic levels at these pins of port B can be recognized as interrupts. So, this is a new thing, change in logic levels merely will be recognized as interrupts for these pins. Then let us go to the interrupts sources which are internal, internal peripheral sources. There are several internal devices on the PIC 18 MCU that can send interrupt request to the MCU. The number of devices varies among the 
We have seen it in MCUs. Typically, the interrupting devices include timers, then A to D converter, serial I/O, and the E prom or E square prom. That is the right operation. During that, it will interrupt the MCU. And the last is low voltage detection module. So these are some of the devices which will interrupt the MCU. Then let us see the SFRs to set up interrupt process. There are ten SFRs which are used to set up interrupt process. These special function registers are ARCON, that is register control, INTCON, interrupt control, then INTCON two, interrupt control two, INTCON three, interrupt control three, PIR one and PIR two, peripheral interrupt register one and two. Then PIE one and two, peripheral interrupt enable one and two, then IPR one and IPR two, interrupt priority register one and two. Arcon register sets up the global priority for all interrupts. So the interrupts here have global priority. So it will be common for all the interrupts. Then the INTCON, that is interrupt control register. Deal primarily with the external interrupt sources. Then PIR, PIE, and IPR handle the internal peripheral interrupts. So, when we study the details of these SFRs, at that time the things will be very clear to you. Then now let us go to the interrupt control. Each interrupt source has three bits to control its operation. The functions of these bits are flag bit to indicate that an interrupt event has occurred. So every interrupt will have a flag bit. Then enable bit that allows program execution to branch to interrupt vector address when the flag bit is set. So when the flag bit is set, we the program execution will branch to the interrupt vector. Then priority bit to select. High priority or low priority, as we have already discussed, there are two groups: high priority and low priority in this PIC 18 family. Then interrupt priority. The interrupt priority feature is enabled by setting the IPEN bit. That is Arcon bit seven. That is what it indicates. When interrupt priority is enabled, there are two bits which enable interrupts globally. So, setting the GIEH bit, that is INTCON seven bit. Now, this is ARCON seven bit. This is INTCON seven bit enables all interrupts that have a priority bit set. So, when this priority bit set, then it will have the high priority. Then setting the GIEL bit, INTCON bit number six, enables all interrupts that have the priority bit cleared. It means it is zero, so it will have the low priority. So when the interrupt flag enable bit and the appropriate global interrupt enable bit are set, the interrupt will vector immediately to the address. 0000080h or 000018h, depending on the priority bit setting. So for high priority, this is the address. For low priority, the address is 000018. Now individual interrupts can be disabled through their corresponding enable bits. Then let us go to the next part. That is complete. Compatibility mode. Now, when the IPEN bit is cleared, that is the bit seven of Arcon. So, when it is zero, then it will go to the default state. The interrupt priority feature is disabled, and the interrupts are compatible with PIC mid-range devices. So, in so that in compatibility mode. The interrupt priority bits for each source have no effect. So INTCON six is 
PEIE bit which enables disables all peripheral interrupt sources. Then INT CON7 is the GIE bit which enables disables all interrupt sources. Global interrupt enable that is GIE. So all interrupts branch to the address 0008 in compatibility mode. So the address for branching will be 00008. Then interrupt process. Let us understand the interrupt process. So when an interrupt is responded to, the global interrupt enable bit is cleared to disable further interrupts. So this global interrupt enable bit, it has to be cleared. Then next, if the IPEN bit is cleared, this is the GIE bit, that is global interrupt enable bit. If interrupt priority levels are used, this will be either the GIEH or GIEL as we have discussed just now. So depending on these two bits, high priority interrupt sources can interrupt a low priority interrupt. Any high priority interrupt source can interrupt in low priority interrupt. Low priority interrupts are not processed while high priority interrupts are in progress. So that is how the things will go on. Then the interrupt process, let us go further. The return address is pushed onto the stack and the PC is loaded with the interrupt vector address. That is 00008H or 00018H. These, were, these are the two addresses. Once in the interrupt service routine, the sources of the interrupt can be determined by polling the interrupt flag bits. So, ISR, the sources of interrupt can be determined by polling the interrupt flag bits. So, whether there are, say, uh, whether there is an interrupt that will be, uh, we know it from the flag bits. The interrupt flags must be cleared in the software before re-enabling the interrupts to avoid recursive interrupts. So we will have to clear the flag bits so that it will not occur again. Then the return from interrupt instruction RETFIE exists the interrupt routine and sets the GIE bit that is GIEH or GIEL if the priority levels are used which re-enables the interrupt. So at the end of the ISR we will have this instruction RETFIE. So that will uh, say return from interrupt and it will set the GIE bit so that it will re-enable the interrupts. So this is the overall interrupt process. Now with this we come to the end of this video. We will study the different SFRs in the next video. Along with that we will study the external sources and the internal sources for interrupts. If you have any questions you can contact me on Facebook, Twitter, Gmail or Instagram. Then if you like the video, press the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel Engineering and Technology for You. And if you want to get notifications, press the bell icon. Then thanks for watching. Have a nice day.